guys, Rhonda here, RK3 Designs, and today we're going to do a fun little project um, that is something that we can also either choose to keep, use, sell, or just practice again. I always tell people when they're doing their sample boards, if you don't wanna just do a lot of sample boards, go get you something that can be repurposed. So I went to Walmart, got me some TV trays and took the legs off temporarily. And then I treated it like a piece of regular MDF. Uh, the edges were already rounded over, which were awesome. So all I did was sand it down a little bit, scuff it up because it did not have a shiny top. If it did, you would have to use a bonding primer, but this one did not. So I was able just to sand scuff it and come over the top with two coats of bare paint and primer in one, natural gray. I really like Dirty Pores because they let me bring in a bunch of colors uh, or just a few colors and um, maybe a little bit of bling. So here's what we're doing. We're gonna start off with uh, just resin, which is a product that I get from Artist Till Death. Check out their website. And it's a gel colorant. So I've got about probably two ounces of, the, of that in here, and that's uh, beige. Then we're gonna come with just resin and bronze. This will be our little uh, bling bling. And it's also a gel. And then lastly, pearl white, which is a gorgeous white and, a, and it is a gel. And these gels you use just a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, and then I'm gonna also use the Alumalite uh, opaque dye from Stone Coat Countertop. And I'll come in with a little bit of uh, pearl mica. I've mixed up pearl and with some resin and I've mixed up a little bit of diamond dust in a little bit of resin, not a whole lot. We're gonna use three spray paints, dark steel, white, and then I'm actually gonna use a clear matte. And the reason I'm using these spray paints is as we do this dirty pour and I pour it in a bucket, it's the propellants in the uh, spray paint that cause some really cool um, features and designs. So I'm really kind of excited to see what this matte does. Let's check it out. All right, so what I like to do is line up my colors kind of in the order that I want to put them in the cup. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with white and then I'm going to come in with the beige color and then I'll come in with the diamond dust, another white, the bronze, and I'll end up with the pearl. And I'd like to kind of keep that pattern so that when I roll it out, I, uh, I have a little bit of um, color through the whole piece. Now, if I know, like in some pores that are really, really big and in actual stone, you'll have one end of the stone is maybe has some different colors. Think about it when you're pouring colors in your cup, the last colors that you put into that cup are going to be the first colors that you see on your finish. So kind of, Keep that in mind. You're gonna be reversing it as you actually pour it. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of uh, white, actually. Little tiny bit. When I do this on my own, I do have a mask on, but obviously I can't wear a mask and talk to you guys. Added a little bit of white spray paint. And I'm just putting a little of the paint. I'm not putting a whole lot. Now I'm coming in with the beige. And then I'm gonna come in with, let's do a little clear. Just a tiny bit. And diamond dust. And like I said, you can do this in so many different uh, layers. I'm gonna come in now with a dark steel. That's a pretty color. And let's come back in, let's see. Let's come back in with clear. 
and my bronze resin. Ooh, that's gonna be pretty. And the pearl. On your white spray paint, I have noticed that when you heat it with your heat gun, it makes these little speckles and it's really pretty, but you have to be really careful because it can get out of hand, but it really takes that finish to the next level and makes it look real. All right, clear, just a little bit. Starting back over with my white. Beige. A little bit of white. Diamond dust. And you don't wanna put a lot of color at one time. You wanna have some layers upon layers. So if you put big, big amounts of paint at one time, you'll have big chunky areas of your pour, which that might be the look that you're going for actually. You may not want small separation of those colors. And uh, clear, clear again, pearl. And you just keep layering. And I now know why they call it a dirty pour. I make the biggest mess doing this. All right, so I was gonna do another layer. But I tell you what I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take what's left in all these cups. I'm gonna turn them over. And I'm gonna lube my board with them. Timber. So I'm gonna take them all out and literally just dump them on the surface. You can see this takes a lot of skill. Not so much. That's what makes it fun. I know people that cook like this. They just literally throw it all together and somehow it turns out fabulous. Me, I can take a recipe and follow it to the letter and it's not edible. Ask my husband. So now we have a mess. So let's take that mess and let's heat it up a little bit just so we can move it. And then we're gonna take a stick and we're just gonna move that around. And the reason we're doing this is we're just trying to lubricate that board so that when we do pour, that epoxy is just gonna run over the top. Not really trying to mix it in very well. Just kind of get it on there. Looks like a two-year-old did it, but it's gonna turn out fabulous. Y'all ready? Here we go. Dirty pour. Oh my gosh, look at these colors. I'm gonna come back. Okay, so you'll notice I have a little bit left in my cup. I wanna be really careful when I scoop that out because I don't want it to all be melded together. So as I scoop it, I'll take it and then I'll just pour it on the end. Way cool. All right. I'm going to let that sit just a little bit. Let it kind of show me which way it wants to go. And then we're going to play with it just a little bit. Okay, so we're back. And I've let it sit for just probably five minutes. It started to kind of move. When you hit your dirty pour with a torch, that white paint that I was telling you about starts to almost come out as speckles and it makes it look so real, like, like honestly, like real stone. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start manipulating this because obviously this is a small surface. I know that I can get some really cool effects 
by moving it. I'm going to heat it up just a little bit more so I get a little bit more movement. It's a little bit cool in my studio. Just the movement, that's how natural stone was created by movement of very, very hot material. So by doing that, we're gonna mimic a piece of stone. I've really not found another technique that's as easy, as quick, and I guess as realistic as doing some of these dirty pours. Now granted, you can't get as artistic with them because you really can't control. But as you do more and more, you learn that what layers affect what, how different layers can be laid out in a different pattern, and what colors work well with others, what colors don't play well with others. But I really like adding that clear mat. You get the same cell effects, I guess you would call it, but you don't actually add color to it. And that, I really, really like that. So I'm gonna let it set for just a little bit more. And then we may, we may play with it. You know, I may not be able to walk away, but we'll see. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna play a little bit. I like to come and get these drips off the edges because they have some really gorgeous colors. And then along the edge, sometimes maybe if I tilt it a little too much, my pattern or my finish kind of mutes out. You can come in and add a little bit of interest so that you have some neat patterns falling over your edges. Ooh, I like that a lot. Utilize that color. Maybe right here. And here I could use some. That looks like a piece of stone. I'm telling you, it does. I'm gonna heat up this one piece over here. Just to get away, just to get those lines to get curved. There we go. That's all I wanted to do. You very seldom see straight lines in nature. So anytime I lay down a vein or something and I can get it to kind of move a little bit, it just brings that, that look of natural. This is gorgeous. I think I'm gonna leave it alone. Yeah, I think I am. I hope you liked this very simple, very fun, very usable project. If you like it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel by hitting the little notification bell, and remember, don't be scared, move forward, and be creative.